well. Okay, are we? Who's doing what? I, I don't know. Oh, I oh. can start it. Oh. <laughs> Hello, folks. It's the Pod Squad with Pat Drake, Wendy Card, and yours truly, George Oliver. Thanks for joining us for Newer Now's podcast for May 6, 2021. This is episode number... 183. 183. <laughs> We're connecting you with the people, places, and happenings in New Bern and surrounding areas. <laughs> My turn? Yeah, go ahead. Back turn on. Join in the conversation by commenting on this live stream on New Bern Now's Facebook page. We'd really like to know what you think. Only positive things, though, please, guys. You know, that's how we <laughs> learn right. about each other and our community at large. But before we get started, guess what we have? We have a contest. We do. Yes, we do. And, what and kind of contest, contest. Is, it? is it? Is it a dance contest? Uh, <laughs> is, it a, is, it a, is it a limbo contest? No, it's a trivia question oh, contest okay. so we, can, we can all participate remotely from wherever we are for okay. a prize for a prize to a local business a gift uh gift certificate for a local business so yeah we all, we always promote shopping local buying local promoting yep. local nonprofits and all things local so the question is name one reliable wildlife removal business and include, their, <laughs> and, and include their phone number and, and i know I, where this is coming from wendy <laughs> and wendy you're really just looking for a recommendation in case you <laughs> want to get rid of those critters right actually all the critters are taken care of and i do have uh reliable uh people that i am aware of but if you know please put in the comment section here on uh, our Facebook page and we will do our checking and if they're a reliable source that will return phone calls. <laughs> you have to return a phone call to be reliable um, and uh, have positive recommendations. So, anyway, so you have already gotten rid of your critters? You found I somebody have, to do it? I have. And you know what? I had a lot of critters. Okay, you ready? We, yeah. you, you could probably turn this into a song. Pat, are you are you uh, musically inclined? Yeah, a little bit. I think I like to think so. Okay, so the two of you could probably turn this into a jingle or a song. A bird's nest in a kitchen cabinet, an injured fledgling grackle in the road, a hefty snapping turtle trying into the pond and the gated pond, and another laying eggs in the pond. Those are all the critters you had to have somebody deal and with? This is all in the last week. Now, the, I've, I've dealt with all of them, but I called, and they, I called this person um, who owns a business, and they returned my call. Actually, no, they, they, they answered right away. There was no, you know, the, didn't go to a voicemail. And then they were they were swamped so they recommended you know and we did what they recommended and it worked and then uh i figured out the rest so but we'll get into all those details in a little bit so that's the that's the trivia question so the trivia question once again is name one reliable wildlife removal service, not um, shelter or anything like that. It's people that will take that animal or reptile or whatever it is that's injured or orphaned and take it to a rehabber. So the person that takes, takes helps you get that animal out of your house or wherever it is. So, yeah. So I am very interested in hearing the answers because we still do have one or more critters living among us. Um, I don't know what it is. I'm hoping it's a squirrel or more than one squirrel, but it's still living in the walls and the floors. And sometimes it just runs around. 
Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've called a couple of people and we still have a critter. So I'm hoping uh, to get some recommendations maybe that I can call. Well, and if they can't help you, George, uh, I've really looked at my friend and I back years ago, um, Spanky, he actually, when he retired from the Navy, he, he did a wildlife control um, business for a while. And he's like, he didn't want to be on call 24 hours. So, but he was an expert at it. I mean, he was, he was amazing. He's from West Virginia and he knows, he knows how to handle critters. So Anyway, long story short, I'm coming to your house, George, and I will. Oh, good. Bring out. Spanky so. with you. You and Spanky. He's in West I just Virginia. want to meet somebody named Spanky. Yeah, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll Zoom with them. So, okay, great. Yeah, but I got. This will be yeah. an adventure. Yeah. This will be and an adventure. I'll, I'll write a song about this, Wendy. I, I definitely will. <laughs> you come to my house and we hunt for critters in my walls. <laughs> we're we're going to document it. So, and Pat. You'll yes, have, ma'am. You'll have to come with us. So you and Mac. Yeah. Bring your net. I know yeah. you're always up for, for some kind of an adventure. Um, yeah. So all right. Um, let's see. Without any let's before we continue, um, on a on a, a, a sad note, um, if you haven't heard, <clears throat> Newburn lost a legend uh this past uh week, uh Lavanya. Lavonia Frazier, also known as Pat Porter, and uh, she passed away on May 3rd, and she was 93 years old. And actually, she was one of, we, we uh, recognized her uh, during one of our trivia questions as the uh, first Black Pepsi, one of the first Black Pepsi um, models. So let's see here. And Valentina Wilson, uh, from Channel 12, news anchor, she recognized Miss Frazier as a trailblazer in the modeling industry and a beautiful light in our community. Her, con tr her contributions as the first Black Pepsi model will live on, and she will miss her dearly, and so will so many people in our community and across the country and the world, probably, especially her unforgettable smile and she did have a magnificent smile so our condolences go out to the Fraser family and uh so I had an opportunity to come across her and, and uh she participated in the 100th anniversary of Pepsi I'm thinking wow. 93 or so 94 maybe uh, we had a parade. Uh, Charlie Daniels was in town, and he was in the parade. Le Miss, Mrs. Frazier was, in, you know, in town and participated in a lot of the festivities. And and she was on a big float, very glamorous, very very uh, very well done. That's awesome. Yeah, and she did have an incredible smile. I mean, yes, she 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 was as beautiful as she was back from back when she was a young young model you know um beautiful inside and out so let's celebrate her life so yeah and on a lighter note George what have you been up to um we are um we've got a few things coming up at Newburn Civic Theater that I've been involved with and some friends are involved with we have a couple of shows this Saturday for Walking Bathtub we have one at five and one at seven thirty hour and a half long each. Um, we're hoping that the restrictions will be lifted come June. Uh, but as of now, we're still, of course, observing the um, COVID restrictions by the governor. And that limits theaters to 50% capacity, uh, but also keeping social distance. And so we figure we can fit about 100 people in New Brunswick Civic Theater with those restrictions in mind. Um, the following week and for two weekends, we have Greater Tuna, which is a play. Um, it's a two-man play. And Neil Oliver and Tyler Griffin are, are in that. And the two of them together play about 20 different characters. It's a satirical comedy about a small town in Texas. Um, and it's a wonderfully funny show. So tickets to that are flying, flying out. I mean, they were, they're almost out of tickets um, for the two week run. But again, that'll be the same kind of restrictions on seating. Um, and, and so there's still some tickets available. That's two weekends. Uh, Keith Boyd is directing that also, another good friend. And then um, we've been playing music with the Bonafides. We have our first gig on Monday with the New Bern Newcomers Club. 
Wow. We are going to be playing um, at Amelia Grove, which is down Bryce's Creek Road. I believe it's owned by the Strange family. And um, it's capital S. I don't know how strange they are, but they are strange. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's, um, we're going to do a hoedown theme. And so we're going to have a lot of fun with that, I think. Uh, so that's that's a lot, a lot of cool stuff going on. Lots of, <laughs> as you start to see uh, things reopen and people um, you know, getting vaccinated and, and feeling comfortable going out. There's a lot of different options going on. Um, a lot of kind of pent up demand for shows or uh, music. And um, I think there's also something happening uh, at the Mayola, Mayola property on Saturday, like a big country concert. So people are getting mm. out and about again, which is good. Um, I obviously want to continue to, to try to be safe and, you know, use your own judgment on that. But as um, Certainly, as um, as people more people get vaccinated and are taking care of that, then that becomes an easier thing to do. I know that for walk-in bathtub, uh, everybody in the group that's performing on Saturday has either had COVID or is double vaccinated and passed the window, and so we are going to perform without our masks on. Um, part wow. of the governor's um, guidance, I think, also CDC, is if you're in a small group and you've all had that protection, then it's fine to take your masks off. And so uh, we will be performing for the first time since February of 2020 without masks on. So that's a big deal and it'll be a lot of fun. I, I think, I hope the improv comes across even better when you can see our faces. <laughs> yeah. <It should. laughs> yeah, that works. Unless you have like a, a invisible mask kind of thing, you know? I, I looked into those and ordered some and they were these clear plastic, but they, the condensation can't breathe. like immediately. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, so it was just like this foggy, uh, foggy George, instead of like, you couldn't really see expressions. It was kind of weird. Yeah, it was harder to breathe. And, and it just like was raining in there. <laughs> and, you know, that's like your saturation, O2 saturation levels drop and they're all, everyone's dropping, you know, on the yeah, stage. Yeah, that's, that's so. right. That's right. <laughs> um, we've also, uh, we've been doing small town news, our podcast for a little over a year now. So that was kind of a neat wow. little, uh, milestone. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, cool. that's cool. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a lot. And can a lot I give a on. shout Can yeah. I give a shout out about our why? <laughs> yes, Pat. Yes. First, first I have to say a shout out to Aaron and Kelly. I had a, one of my many meetings <laughs> and some of the different hats I get to wear at our YMCA, but I'm thrilled to share that the outdoor pool bubble is down and the pool wow. is wide open. And like uh, George said, people are beginning to come out and about and there are still sun worshipers and with the restrictions being apart and out in fresh air, you know, uh, you know, there's lots of spacing on the nice big pool deck and uh, trying to encourage folks to return and even indoors come and exercise and join a class or walk the outdoor track. There's lots folks can do at our Y. Summer camp will be coming up shortly. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's great. a lot going on. Yeah. And I, I, I want to give what? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. George. I was going to give one more shout out. Um, my lovely wife, Dare, has gotten another job. She's going to work as the coordinator of fine arts at Epiphany, uh, wow. Epiphany School. Um, and so she's also con she's going to continue to work with uh, Christ Church. She works there part time uh, doing their um, all sort of graphic design and publishing things that they have. Um, but she'll be doing this at Epiphany, too. And so real proud of her um, work, taking a, a good look at the fine arts there and seeing what can be done to improve that. Um, and, and her plan is to draw from local folks that we have here because Newburn is such a wonderfully diverse artistic community and there are lots of people out there um, that have talents and gifts and skills that um, would translate well that kids would want to learn and so um, that's what she'll be looking at and um, and just really excited to to put uh, more of a focus on the arts program there so really cool Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, wow. The arts abound in New Bern. Yes, <laughs> yeah, just right. like, you know, pre the pandemic, well, it's, we're still in the pandemic, but pre pandemic, you know, New Bern was becoming known as the Asheville of the East. So it's, mm -hmm. so actually, it's New Bern is the New Bern. No, Asheville is the, I, I can't think of the, 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 the way we said it before, but it was funny. I'll remember. Asheville is the, time. Asheville is the New Bern of the West, maybe. There you go. Yes. Yeah, got <laughs> you got it. Thank you, George. <laughs> and, and 
let's see. We're, we're getting beyond the time schedule, so let's bring Amy, okay. our dear friend Amy Schultz, in, and she's with Still Waters. And where is she? Is she coming in? Amy, you there? Yeah, yeah, I think she's coming. She always has a smile on her face. Watch her be frowning when she comes in. <laughs> <laughs> I just muted you. Please, please unmute yourself, Amy. Yeah, am oh, I no, there? I, I, am I here? I, I'm You're muted. Here. There you go. There we go. Hey, Amy. <laughs> hey, Amy. How are you? <laughs> well, hello, everybody. I, I heard all these wonderful things going on in New Bern. Yeah. Yes. And what's happening in Bayboro? Well, in Bayboro, we just had a resource fair out at Pamlico Community College for folks to come by and, and learn all about the different things we have here. Uh, apparently in, in Pamlico County, even though we only have a few resources, um, sometimes they're not as well advertised. So it's kind of amazing to go out and see all the different providers that we really do have here and some of the folks that will come from New Bern and help us out here and uh, come out to uh, Bayboro and Alliance and Grantsboro and all that. Uh, so it was great to see everybody. Um, and like you, you all had said, um, people I think are slowly kind of coming out and getting back into a routine. And um, so it's a good thing. It is a good thing, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, the other day I realized I was driving, driving around town and the outskirts and I ended up in uh, Pamlico County without crossing a bridge. So people that keep saying, oh, I don't want to cross a bridge to go to Pamlico County, you don't have to. So there's a <laughs> yes. way. How did, you, yeah. how did you do that? Like you well, didn't have to cross the news? No, I live in Alpha Washington Post Road. Oh, so I gotcha. took 43 up to 17 and then 17 down and over. So yeah, it was gotcha. fun and it was at all. Next thing you know, I saw welcome to Pamplico County. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> there you go. Anyway, so Amy, um, you're, you deal with a lot of uh, mental health, um, helping people through mental health um, uh, issues and, and what, are, what trends are you seeing right now? Well, so I work at Stillwaters. I'm actually program director, and we do see a lot of folks for what we call outpatient counseling services. So, you know, we might shorthand it and say talk therapy. Um, so we see couples, and we see kids, and we see singles, and uh, just about everybody. Um, but right, we are seeing some trends going on. Um, in particular, and, and I think actually this is nationally, uh, I had se just seen something this week on the news, but um, all of a sudden we are getting quite a few eating disorders. Um, and we were kind of trying to figure out where that was coming from. And um, I mean, we know we always have a certain percentage of our practice that's going to fit into that, um, but we're seeing a higher number. Um, and what we're seeing here is in particular, uh, I would say like the 15 to 20 year olds and um, I think with just all the change that happened with COVID and being home and not being able to go to school and getting support in different areas, um, you know, some of these, some of these young, young folks just want to take control of something. And uh, sometimes eating is, is something that you can control. So we were seeing that, but the good news is there's some really great treatment for it. And we can work with that family or that child or that young adult, and we can typically uh, get them back on the path to wellness. So that's always a, a good thing. And it's better to get in treatment early than wait till it gets uh, to be just uh, something that perpetuates and go on, goes on and maybe even turns into something else. Um, so, you know, it's always about those coping skills. And I love that you guys talk about all these different things that you can do, because uh, that's, that's very helpful. Uh, for mental health, any, I, I think it's just good for everybody, but, you know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have mental health and we have physical health, so they go hand in hand, you know. Yes. Absolutely, for, yes. Amy, yeah. for, for students, do you tend to get a lot of recommendations or referrals from teachers and schools? Like this? Yes, 
Yes, yeah. we do. And um, yeah. actually, we are able to go into the schools here in Pamlico County, and we actually go to Arapaho Charter School. Um, I've been to Epiphany. I, I, I heard you say your wife is going to be. Mm -hmm. I've been to Epiphany to see a student or two there. Um, so we and the Christian school as well. So we we do have that ability to see the kids where they are. Um, you know, in Pamlico, we have difficulty with transportation and um, getting people where they need to be. So we do have the option of teletherapy and also seeing kids in school and HeartWorks, which is our after school program, uh, where we see about 150 kids a day. Uh, we can go to HeartWorks as well and see those kids. And, and, and there's some of the most vulnerable kids in the county. So it's good that we can provide all those services in one spot and make it easy for the parents. Um, so it's, that's a, that's a good thing as well. And uh, one other thing about uh, the, the kids is um, just the truancy uh, issue. Oh boy, uh, the schools have their hands full and um, this year has been, the numbers are just astronomical with truancy um, and just, uh, you know, kids not doing very well. Uh, so we're gonna keep our eyes and ears on that. And I, I know some of the letters went out for the kids to attend summer school this year. So um, hopefully there'll be some alternatives where we can get the kids caught up uh, that need to be caught up. Wow, so I, I don't have children, so I had no, no idea. Um, are there organizations, is there an organization or a team of organizations that are working together to, to try to figure this problem out or is it being addressed locally, nationally, statewide? Well, one of the local initiatives that we have here in Pamlico County, um, and, and it's all over the state, but is, it's called Juvenile Crime Prevention Council or JP, JCPC. And they actually have a lot of uh, funding that they give to different programs. So I'm gonna give my, my husband a plug, uh, Jeff Schultz at the Vault Center. So for instance, uh, some of his programming is funded by JCPC to allow some kids that are having trouble uh, following the rules, so to speak. <laughs> um, so they may be eligible then to go to the Vault Center and continue their education there rather than sit in a high school that they're just not interested in. Um, so kids can come to our program as well and get counseling services at, at low or no cost. And typically it's no cost. So, you know, if we're dealing with a social anxiety or, or a child that just um, needs support or is depressed or anxious, whatever it is, we're gonna get to those root issues. Um, and we also, I know the school does a great job. They have a committee that meets and helps get to the root causes uh, why kids aren't going to school. Uh, but this year has been unprecedented, <laughs> uh, as you can imagine. Wow. We had a, a comment. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Your whole lives are turned upside down. So many, you know, with the restrictions of COVID for the last year, home yeah. virtual, if you have the ability to be virtual, go to class, not seeing any friends, you know, mom and or dad may be out of work or, you know, and, and then the ch children, you internalize it. And, you know, uh, a lot of it, unfortunately, comes down on their shoulders, even though they had no part in it. And, you know, uh, like Amy said, the, uh, you know, it falls on their shoulders and there's nothing they can do to control to make it better, you know, or to fix it. You know, so uh, I think that's part of why pets have become such a big, a big item in households. Yeah, definitely. The, yeah. Well, I and we had a. We, we had a comment uh, posted while you were speaking, Amy, and it was somebody who said, my youngest boy is going to summer school and he wants to. And so I wonder, like, like Pat's, you know, people, they've just been away from their friends and out of school. And um, maybe that's a, a benefit to having summer school as you kind of mm -hmm. get more of that, you know, hands-on instruction and be around people and things like that. So it's an interesting spin on it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually hearing that from some of my clients as well, that they're actually looking forward uh, to going back. Uh, maybe this year, the parents aren't comfortable sending them to school. Uh, so they've been virtual all year and they're looking right. forward to going to summer school. So, um, and that's that's a switch. I don't uh, uh, right. I don't know about you, and, and, and uh, but I was not going to summer school. <laughs> that was, no, mm -mm. that motivated me to do very well in school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, 
real quick, we we do have some comments here, and before Amy get, leaves us, um, let's see. Uh, Pamico County High School has a band concert at 2 p.m. this Saturday out on the lawn. Okay, that's from Doris. Thank Doris. Thank you for watching. She says my youngest boy is going to the summer school and he wants. Yep, when kids are unstable in school, the parents are unstable, unfortunately. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for for sharing that with us. Um, and on another note, Bob, our friend Bob Usan. If we want to be the Asheville of the East, we need many more breweries to go with the arts. <laughs> it's, it's a fair point, Bob. There are lots We're of breweries there. in Asheville, but we are. I mean, Freshwater Brewery, I think, is either open or about to open across from Tap That. And then now, you have Brewery 99 just expanded and went to the larger area down the street. So there are uh, some coming. I, I popped in to Brewery 99 yesterday uh, looking actually for Seed to Shaker for my nice mocktail for, uh, you know, uh, and unfortunately I'd messed up the dates where Seed to Shaker was, but anyway, okay. um, but uh, Brewery 99 with Pete's Place is, was hopping, let me tell yeah. you. And then across the street is Tap That. So they have a whole thing going downtown yeah. and Crema yeah. Brew is right there. So it's a little bit of something for everyone. And, yeah. and you have Brewtopia too. Don't forget about our friends out of Brewtopia. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> right and because they yes. have food trucks also too so i mean they're i mean it's just it, things are it, coming alive you know it's gonna it, pop yeah, yeah that's right it's gonna pop for sure um one other trend i wanted to touch on because you started the show uh with the loss of a great new Bernian, and um i i did want to just mention too that we are seeing a lot of grief and loss and you can imagine with covid um you know relatives who got sick and died um families who uh couldn't see relatives for a long time um um, unfortunately, uh, we mentioned the pets, pets who had, who had passed, um, just a lot of, of grief and loss. So, um, you know, hopefully with COVID lifting, that will help with the social isolation. Um, what I would say is to anyone, you know, who's lost a pet, you know, if you can, if you can move through some of that grief and get some support, but boy, there, I, I know Colonial Capital would love to have you come out and, and take a look at some of their pets or even just foster um, mm -hmm. some pets and what great therapy, right? Yes. You, know, you yes. help yourself through helping others. Yeah. Um, so those yeah. are some good things. Um, and there's always one of the best kept secrets um, about hospice service is that hospice runs bereavement groups on a regular basis. So any of your local hospice um, agencies, you can contact and just ask them when, you know, when's your next bereavement group? And they will let you know about that. And, or sometimes they do have someone that would uh, even just talk to you a little bit about resources and services in the community. And of course, you know, here in Stillwaters, you know, we, we gladly will see you for therapy as well. But some folks maybe only just need a little bit, you know, a little bit of support here and there. So those are some ideas for you. Yeah, and, and just to touch on what you had mentioned, also Craven Colonial Capital, uh, no, Cra Craven Pamlico Animal Shelter, uh, which is near Colonial Capital. They're also, you know, have animals for rescue and adoption. And let's see, what else? Um, grief, grief Share Program, which is Ron and Pam Benita. They, mm -hmm. they put that on on a regular basis. And one more comment, where are my glasses? Here we go. Brewery 99, a new place is very nice and planning further expansion to the property. So thank you, Bob. And Amy, it's wonderful to see you and we hate to see you go, but we, we have a, our second guest. So yeah, so glad you you made it. We for the last two times and you've been scheduled. Oh my gosh, we, we bumped you off and we apologize. And, oh, um, we are good. We are always good. But anytime, have a good time on the rest of the show, and we'll be in touch. And uh, you know, look look forward to uh, seeing you around town, doing all those wonderful activities. Yes, yes. we'll catch up for a beer. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Woohoo! <laughs> <coughs>
All right, and we have, uh, real quick, I'm gonna do the trivia question again. Name one reliable local wildlife removal business and include their phone number. And they have to be reliable. And I'm not talking Other about than a shelter. Other, Other than, than Spanky. Spanky. No yeah. Spanky. Yeah. Spanky's in West Virginia. So, all right. <laughs> Let's bring in K Kippy Hammond. And do y'all know Kippy Hammond? Do you know who she is? Uh, oh, there she is. Okay, Kippy is, uh, she's a portraits and fine art and pastel and oil artist. And Kippy Hammond's work has been recognized in numerous exhibits exhibitions and solo shows receiving national and international awards so there we go and there welcome. she is and welcome hi okay uh, unmute how about that <laughs> there you go <laughs> there you go hey, you, hi. Now, you would think we would know how to work this stuff by now you know <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never been on a Zoom meeting that somebody wasn't fumbling with something, you know, to get turned online. You know, I think that's just the prelude of everything. That's so thank right. Thank you for inviting me today. No, thank you for joining us. Wow, what a pleasure! And you have something really exciting to announce, and it's coming up. It's coming up like soon. <laughs> very soon very soon it's been a crazy time but um yes we we are finally after since 2018 we've started planning this and we're finally getting off the ground with plan air newburn and um it's going to be a complete outdoor venue and we're just really excited and the artists some of the artists have already arrived and so it's really exciting um and I can answer any questions, or you want me to just give you kind of a recap? Sure. Well, and and you pronounced it. Uh, is it pronounced plan air? Plan air. Mm -hmm. okay. It's actually. I always want to say. Word. I always want to say plain air, but but it is outside, right? It's plan air. Yes, that actually is a French word for out for open air, okay. and this actually goes back to the uh, the nineteen hundreds when um, the paints were able to go they they invented the tube so artists were able to go out of their studio and and take their paints with them so this kind of started it was a tradition then and and so people were able to actually respond to what they were seeing and so it improved their their understanding of light and color and reality and they would take that back in the studio with them so it's a it's a long long-term type um, uh, tradition, but uh, it's been turned into pretty much of a big movement, I'd say within the last 15 or 20 years. And um, it's making a huge impact, you know, uh, to me, you know, artists are traditionally very lone, uh, alone, not lonely, but, you know, they work in the, they work in their head and they these are the kind of artists that might go down to the bottom of the grand canyon to find the perfect picture you know and then people work in their studio and so a lot of times everybody just sees this picture and they think it's magic and they think i can't do that or whatever but to be able to actually watch these people paint and create is a it, it's very exciting. And um, so we've got 22 guest artists that are coming from around the, the nation. They were, there were 10 of them that we, uh, we invited under the uh, advice of Nancy Tankersley, which was the founder of Plan Air Easton, which is the most prestigious one in, in the United States. So we invited those 10 and then the others were juried in. They had to send their work in and then they were selected. We have five Eastern Carolina um, artists. And um, so we're starting. I mean, you know, they start on Saturday. I mean, excuse me, they come. They have orientation on Monday morning at noon. They go out painting all in New Bern. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, they'll be through Craven County. And, but we're having 11 scheduled de demos that are announced ahead of time. So you know exactly where you can go and sit, but you can go and watch anybody, anytime. You see an artist, you run up, you know, if you get too close, put your mask on. We'll have ribbons out to keep social distancing. Take your chair, you know, take your sunscreen and you get to watch them 
five minutes, three hours, it doesn't make any difference, you know, and you can go from one artist to the next. And um, on Friday, we're going to be in Oriental and then we're going to paint the big boys. We call them, you know, the big boats. So they're going to be <laughs> over, over there for it to the docks these are a lot of boating people in this in this crew mm -hmm. and then on saturday we have a quick paint for everybody and it's back in newton uh, newburn again and within a five uh five block area and that's going to be open also to youth and adults there's a registration there's a small fee for the uh, the older ones and um everybody paints i mean they start at 10 o'clock the featured artists will start at 11 we're handicapping them and then you paint for four hours. <laughs> and then when we, we got Eric, we, we, I heard him, he's practicing his bagpipes. When you hear the bagpipe, then the, the plan air is over. Okay. <laughs> and so then everybody, everybody brings their painting and then we're, we, they display them around the farmer's market and then they're judged and we have prizes and ribbons and cash prizes for the two categories. And the winner, if they're not a featured artist, the highest winner of the adult one gets invited to 2022 without selection, without a selection. Wow. So we have artists coming from as far away as Texas already that are going to come in just to try to get that slot. So um, the paintings are on sale right now. They've already started a preview. Craven County Art Council Bank of the Arts is hosting the virtual one that's online. It'll be updated every day. We have an exhibit that will open on Monday at the farmer's market and it's, we got the farmer's market for the whole week. So we're gonna open at nine o'clock with fresh paintings that come off the artist gonna be coming in at all hours, putting up new paintings and displaying them. And people can kind of roam in and roam out, buy a painting, look at a painting, watch painting it doesn't make any difference and then on saturday the judging um and it's only the work that's been done for this week uh for for the featured artist they are they are vying for some um uh, cash awards and all kinds of awards anyway and then also there's a separate competition for the ones that just painted for that day and then the gallery stays up until everybody goes home and then on sunday it opens again we have a artist choice award that the artists actually vote for and so that person has to make a demo for the art for the other featured artist with the with the public in the back so that's going to be Sunday morning and then they pack up what things that haven't sold and everything pack up at two and they'll be gone getting ready for 2022 so that's it awesome so Kippy there's going to be a lot of really new beautiful art of local sites so all these, so the idea is they're painting what they see, right? right? When they do these. And so, wow, that's so cool. What an opportunity to pick up, you know, beautiful yeah. artwork of our area. It's all on location. Yeah. And actually yeah. a second project, second project we have, and it's been a little bit, we've been a little slow getting off because like we started in 2018 and have to quit in 2020, mm -hmm. rescheduled for October, did it again. And so this year we finally, saw a glimmer of light when we had, we already had the farmer's market for workshops. We realized that we could make that into an outdoor venue. And so we just said, we, the artists stayed with us for the whole year. They said, yes, we will, we will still come. And um, so I said, we're going to plan it. Like we're going to have it in May 1st. If it doesn't work, we're pulling the plug. They said, we're, we're fine with that. So fortunately, you know, like I said, everybody's kind of coming out, sticking their toe in the water and everything. And yeah. I can't think of anything that could be more healing and more um, celebratory from this period that we've just gone through. And these artists are the same. I mean, they, they're just like me and you. We have, I have three wonderful watercolorists and um, they had full careers in, as, architect, uh, as architects. One of them taught at Oklahoma University in the school um, in the School of Architecture, and then have a second career, and they and they're nationally known. Um, James Richards just was honored being selected um, a master's for the American Impressionist Society. I think there's only twenty, so we're talking about we've got some powerful resumes with these artists, 
and and every opportunity we're having making every opportunity for these artists to to interact with the local artists our plan air group that meets every Tuesday, they're coming in and doing the orientation for our featured artists. And then we're also doing the demos and everything that 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 are for for really for the artist here or anybody who's interested. All right. Well that's fantastic. Kippy, yeah. I can't thank you enough for joining us. And I, I I'm so so sorry we ran we're running out of time. We got got to get to our next guest, but it's what a pleasure to have you and yes thank you. Thank I, you. Thank you so And I got it all in too, didn't I? You got it you all did. in. You did. I, <laughs> one more question, awesome. though. If, yeah. if we want to find out, like, information of times and places, is there a website or a Facebook yes. group? There's a very full website. It's called Plan Air Newburn. It's P-L-E-I-N Newburn.com. And you can also volunteer for a lot of things as well, too. So go on there. Find out what's going on. Okay. We, are, you gonna be, are you going to be painting, Kippy? Will you be out there? I'll be out there, but I don't know if I'm oh. painting. I'm, I'm post you know? There you go. I, mean, I don't know if you can do like the quick paint. You could be like a quick paint, you know, a dark horse in the in the. I don't want to be a really quick paint. I have, have a feeling. So yeah. Okay. So come on by the gallery. It opens on Monday. All right. Okay. We have one more comment. That sounds great. Can't wait for that. So thank you. with yeah. that said. <laughs> Kippy, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so thank much. You. Good job. See you thank later. You. Awesome. Bye bye. Nice. bye bye. Bye bye. I love your show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you I have, have a, I have a squirrel story too. <laughs> well, you, you'll have to <laughs> come time. back. Yeah. Invite thank the you. To the quick paint. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. See you later. All right. Well. <laughs> wow. That's that's a lot. Very cool. It's, and you know what's also very cool? We have, uh, have did you know that there's a local rugby um, team in New Bern? Not until right now. Oh my gosh. I wanted to have them on. It was, it was right before the pandemic hit us last year. So I'm so glad we reconnected and it's Laura Berry is joining us and there she is. Hello. Hi, Hello. thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and, and she's a team captain and president of the New Bern's Women's Rugby Football Club, right? Yes, wearing many hats right now. Um, <laughs> when I got here, there was, there's actually a really great men's team here. I highly recommend that everyone go see a game when they start playing again. Um, they were super welcoming when I first got here, but there wasn't a women's team. And I've been, I'm a military spouse, so I've sort of been floating without, you know, being tackled regularly, which if you're a rugby player, it's very upsetting. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when I got here, we were going to be here for a bit. So I thought, what the heck, I'm going to start my own. And now we have the Newburn Women's Rugby Football Club. Wow. Wonderful. Very cool. I, Wonderful. I didn't, I didn't know there was a men. So now, hey, yeah. women make history or not history, but we need to find out about the women's before the men. So that's good to know. You yeah. Yeah. guys always have the first, you know, anyway. So <laughs> tell us about it. It's great. Um, if you've never played rugby before, um, the best way to really describe it is a hooligans game played by gentle folk. Um, it's <laughs> like there's a lot of controlled chaos, but it's a great way to get in shape, to make friends, especially if you're a military spouse, joining your local rugby club is an excellent way to just learn about where you're living and also get involved in your community. We actually just wrapped up our no joke food drive. Uh, we ran it for the entire month of April. Uh, we actually partnered with the men's team and with the River Rats roller hockey team. And we were going out to local businesses and asking them to be drop-off sites. So we're not only trying to collect food and goods for those in need in our community, but also trying to drive um, traffic to local businesses. And that's a huge part of playing rugby. They, the teams always get back to where they are. Oh, so that's, wow. the, that's the one side of it. That's, that's how we reel you in. And then the rest of it is wild violence on the field and beer afterwards so we have <laughs> and then, what did you call it you called it a, a gentleman's game played by hooligans or the yes. reverse of that yeah right a hooligans <laughs> game played by gentlemen is is right, the classic right, right. way to describe it yes but it's like it's it's kind of like football but you don't have pads and helmets right 
Yeah, so there's actually, um, rugby is very old. It's a very old sport. Um, they usually call it the, like, the father of football. And mm -hmm. you do tackle, you do full contact. You'll see people running around with like old school football helmets with like a little leather cap. That's called a scrap cap and a mouth guard. <laughs> and that's all you got. So <laughs> you do a lot of focus on being knowledgeable of your body. And that's actually one of the great aspects of rugby that is um, really, it's a great sport for women to play. A lot of women think like, oh, I couldn't do this. Like that's too rough for me. It's really all about knowing how to use your body and how to um, function and also like teaching yourself that you can take a lot more on than you thought you could. You really don't get hurt that badly as long as you focus the fund on the fundamentals. Most of the really horrible injuries I've seen are by people who have never played before and are brand new to the sport, which is fine. It happens. But once you know what you're doing, there's, you know, you don't get hurt in rugby as long as you go cheek butt cheek and that's how you do a tackle and you land on some <laughs> little hair as a pillow and it's perfect <laughs> that's an interesting point uh, because you know all the studies about concussions and football and all that um the, the helmets and the gear actually uh, make football players think that they're not as vulnerable mm -hmm. right and they launch themselves at each other maybe head first you're not going to do that if you're wearing the little leather hat right so you're going to be yeah, more careful about how had, you um, it's that I actually wear a scrum cap. I have had a few concussions in my day. I've been playing since around like 2012, 2013. So I've had a few bumps on the noggin but since wearing a scrum cap and my mouth guard, you really do feel um, it, it alleviates a lot of pressure on your head and it keeps you from just bouncing around like, you know, a ping pong ball basically. Yeah. But yes, if you do, um, so we always teach safety first, essentially. So what I have some, I actually have some very brave brand new recruits who have come out. They've never played before. They've played other sports. Um, we focus on the fundamentals. I'm not just going to throw you in and do a complete trial by fire. Maybe like a little bit of <laughs> but not like a complete bonfire. Um, so you walk through it. And that's the other nice thing about this. You, you, you walk through how you tackle you get your fundamentals down and then you just like slowly start to dip your toe in the water a little bit more, a little bit more. And then all of a sudden you're laying out people twice your size and it's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's awesome. You know, I used to, I lived up in Northern Virginia and Maryland, DC and that, and boy, man, it was the, yeah, the Maryland, the Pennsylvania up in Philly, all those teams, this is back in the nineties, but, um, Boy, the DC team, the DC women's team was the roughest. Uh, wow, they were tough. But I, I loved. I, I didn't play. I'm, I, I'm, I'm very short, and I, I just, I, I already had uh, enough uh, damage to my brain. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it was, it was so much fun watching. Just, oh my gosh, yeah. So where do you play? Well, we're actually right now, um, we practice every Saturday at Walter B. Jones Park here in Hatblock. Um, and we actually have a very special practice coming up this Saturday, to celebrate Mother's Day. And if we get new moms to come on out and practice, new moms being, we've never played the sport before. You can be a new mom, you can be an old mom. As long as you're a mom, come out, practice with us. <laughs> and then we'll buy you a free beer at Brutopia and Hatblock afterwards. So there's no reason not to come out. <laughs> team's name um our team's name is i actually have my shirt we are the new Bern women's rugby club okay. um and we actually have uh we're very we're very new we were founded as of last year um in december right before the pandemic hit so my new recruits are are, are brand new recruits so we are doing a big recruitment call this weekend and all the weekends moving forward um, to try and get a solid team here because we actually, hopefully, will be able to play some other nearby teams. You've got Camp Lejeune has a team. You have Cape Fear. So we might actually okay. be having wow. some full cool 15s down here in New Bern soon for you guys. Wow. Well, what, wow. What, is the, what is the age uh, range for you? Like, how young? It's 18 and up. Okay. So I, I 18, know lacrosse. 100, I'll take you. If you can <laughs> yeah. move down the field, you can play. As long as you're a mom. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what it seems like lacrosse is relatively new to this area, right? I want to say maybe 10, 15 years ago, years, they started yes. having club teams. Yeah. Yeah. I, 
and and I know lacrosse and rugby are not the same thing. Um, but is this something that younger kids ever play? Are there leagues for kids under 18? Yeah, there actually are. There's um, a really great organization called Girls Rugby, which is all about the youth rugby program. Um, and there's a lot of easier, we call them like, you know, like either teams, farming teams, right here, but like in baseball. Uh, mm -hmm. But basically we're trying to build up organizations that start from, some of them start as little as six and you can play all the way up. There's a bit more popularity starting to boom for rugby in the past few years. I want to say a little bit shorter than lacrosse, probably closer to like five or eight. The last five, uh, five or eight years has been really good for rugby. Yeah. We're still trying to boost it up from the grassroots team. Um, and that's why community teams are so important because sometimes we're people's first introduction to rugby. Right. Um, which yeah. kind of stinks because if you want to get your younger kids in, we're 18 and up. So I would highly recommend checking out Girls Rugby. Um, great organization. They start younger teams all throughout the country. I believe they just opened up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So they're trying to get, they're trying to steamroll through the nation as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to steamroll New Bern, but they have a bunch <laughs> of Yeah. And, and George had mentioned, as long as you're a mom, you don't, that's for mothers. No, right? yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Just you know, for Sunday. They yeah, get a free for, beer. You got to be for a Sunday, but or, yeah, or all, Saturday, yeah, all women are welcome, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone. Yeah. I if you've never played before, if you're, you know, I, I don't care as long as you have the ability to take a ball and move. I will have you on my team. I'll we'll teach you everything you need to know. Um, we tell people that getting joining this sport is incredibly easy, and it is all you need are pair of cleats. Um, pair of soccer cleats, not football cleats. You are not allowed to gadge out the faces of your opponents. And, <laughs> and, an and you're set. <laughs> um, Bob, Bob Husson, yeah. Bob Husson, who has, has been on, on this, uh, on the comments today, says part of the safety in rugby is no blocking and no tackling on the head or below the waist. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Um, those, anything above your shoulders, is called a high tackle. Um, I once saw a girl, she went full spider monkey and launched herself at someone. I don't know how she got that high up in the air, but that she got, you know, she got parted for that. Um, so that's the other reason why rugby, um, the fundamentals are so important and you'll have professionals who, you know, they're amazing. They can run you down in like two point seconds flat, but they will still practice the fundamentals of ball handling and tackling because if you get cocky, you'll get hurt. So that's why safety first, always. And if you need a scrum cap, wear it. I have one. It's a lovely Jolly Rancher blue. You cannot miss me. <laughs> oh, my, my granddad played football at Carolina. He was a linebacker and he had one of those yeah. little, so it hadn't been that long, really. Yeah, it's, football I, it's still, I, mean, I, I think it works. I don't know if this is just myself telling me it's going to protect me from everything, but it, I mean, I can feel the difference <laughs> if I wear it or not. And they, they're yeah. still solid. <laughs> awesome. Pretty cool. All right. Well, Laura, Pat, do you have a question? Just how does people get in touch with her if there are any anybody out there is interested? Yeah, you can get in touch with us on Facebook. Um, we are at Facebook New Bern Women's Rugby Football Club, or if you just want to type it in, that's at NBWRFC. Um, or you can also reach out to our men's team as well if you are interested in playing with them. They are the New Bern. Um, they're just Newburn Rugby Club. They got started first, so I let them have it. And <laughs> um, they're a great group of guys. I highly recommend it if any of my gentlemen friends want to get started with them as well. Oh, good. Yeah. And you're very active on social media too. So yeah. 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 Um, you know, that's the nice thing about the pandemic. I have nowhere to go. So I. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad we're looking forward to seeing you play. So thank I, you. I'm so, yeah. it's a good show for you guys. Th thank, thank you. Your energy. Very cool. Thank you for joining us. This is thank awesome. Thank you so much for having thank me. You. It's been a blast. Yeah, oh good. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet bye bye. You. <laughs> See, bye. Have a great day. You too. Thank you so much. <laughs> See you later. Awesome. Very cool. All Very right. Cool. So which one of you guys is gonna learn how to play rugby? I know how. Both yeah. of you. That's the only answer is both of you. <laughs> I'm too short. <laughs> no, I think that means you got a good center of gravity. Yeah. It's hard to yeah, take you down. 
Yeah, you can go some, to the spider Yes, some of yeah. the best players that I watched were short, very short people. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking I can't play because I'm too tall, Pat. So that was my <laughs> oh, excuse. No. You, can't, you can't turn it around on me. <laughs> uh, no age limit, huh? Jeez. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, get to the trivia answer. So do we have any question the trivia question let's say it again and you'll have a couple we'll give you a minute to uh respond actually somebody said in the comments here sorry i or, haven't seen an answer to that we've had lots of comments today but nothing about critters doris said short right 411 yeah i think short. i think she <laughs> wants to be recruited she wants to play rugby go for it doris yeah, go get them. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, well, we're, we're, we're at the trivia question, okay? This is for a chance to win a gift certificate to a local business. So take a guess. Uh, the question is, um, name one reliable local wildlife re removal service, removal business. Uh, now we're not looking, uh, we're not talking about rehabilitation shelters. It's people that will come to your house or wherever you, the, the injured animal or orphan bird is and take it to a wildlife rehabber. So safely, not killing the animal or anything like that. Um, anyway, do we have any answers? Let's see. Do, 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 do. All right. You mean wait? You mean other than Bob Hoosen? I bet Bob. <laughs> Bob. No, what I'm Bob just kidding. <laughs> Bob, let us know. Doris? Are you a critter getter? Doris, do you know of any critter getters? You're like, what is a critter getter? That's you know, I've never <laughs> heard of that until you said that the other day. Um, a critter yeah. getter. Okay, I'll tell you a quick story about the the bird that I end up going to owls. Have you been to the Outer Banks Wildlife uh, Rest no. Wildlife Shelter mm -mm. in Newport? Okay. Oh, we do we have? Okay, Doris says wildlife officer. LOL, then not said, by name. Don't know any. Okay. All right. I called the North Carolina Wildlife Commission and I said because I thought that that was they would come out, you know, just like a, the wildlife, they have rangers. My, my neighbor's one of the rangers. He wasn't home, but there was a bird, a, a baby bird, a fledgling grackle that was uh, in their road and it was injured, obviously a cat or something got a hold of it. And uh, so I called, well, at first I looked for the NC Wildlife Commission and they said, okay, um, for severely injured white-tailed deer or black bear, contact the NC Wildlife Helpline at 866-318-2401. Okay, that's Monday through Friday. <laughs> it didn't say anything about birds or <laughs> reptiles or you know any anything like that. So, or the Wildlife Enforcement Division at 800-662-7137. Uh, uh, after business hours. If you come across injured or orphaned small animals or birds, call a volunteer wildlife rehabilitator, right? That sounds easy, right? Well, I did. I called the Outer Banks Wildlife Shelter down Newport and they said, bring them on. I'm like, okay, so like. So you got to pick it up. You got to get it. So what if it's a raptor you know with the big claws and the beak or you know like a raccoon or possum or something that you you, you know we really shouldn't be handling that but there's lots of like squirrels you've got so many babies out there right now and a lot of them are either injured or orphaned or you just don't know what to do you know so well we put them in a box and took them and he's going to be totally fine so but they said if he, you, we didn't bring him it there um, within a, the next day or two, it wouldn't have survived. 
So, you know, it's important um, to know who to call. So two of the wildlife, there's no answers. Anyone want to guess? Do you all I, have I, a I, I, I question. Did, did you know it was a grackle? Like, did you recognize it was a grackle or did you find out later? I thought it was a grackle. Laura thought it was a, I can't remember the name. It was a little black. It, it was a, he was all mangled kind of, but I thought oh. it was a grackle, but the, they confirmed it at the, when they examined it. Okay. So, well, yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good knowing that. Yeah. Um, I don't have any guesses. Pat, you got any guesses? No, no guesses. I mean, I'm going to, I got a guess. I'm going to say Clayton Cheek <laughs> or, or Pam Yancey. Those are the two in my Pam. office that are most likely to, yeah, Pam. Pam and Clayton. Yeah, call Pam. Okay. Where's the, I have the answer here. Um, okay. Here we go. Two of them are. Write this down if you're watching and put it yeah. on your refrigerator, put it in your phone, whatever. Uh, it may come in handy. So it's Team NC Wildlife Control at 252-626-5191 and Carolina Wildlife Solutions at 252-474-4240. So, yeah, or contact the NC Wildlife Resources Commission for severely injured white-tailed deer or bear. So. Well, so, so is this only if they're injured or if you've got one in your walls? Can I call one of these two gentlemen? Yeah, if, if you got one in your walls, uh, last week somebody called me because they wanted help getting one out of the kitchen cabinet. There was a nest full of birds, and uh, I called... Wow. Uh, Todd at the NC Wildlife. What did I say the name was? NC. Wait. Wendy, it was somebody. It was it was a, a bird's nest in their kitchen in a cabinet. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was coming in from like out you know the in between the walls where they come in through the brick. So you oh. have to close off the brick. So you have to have someone there on the ready. To close that brick off, as soon as you grab that nest and you make sure all the doors are open to the, get to the outside, this was an apartment building. So you had to make sure everything was clear. You have gloves on, grab that nest with the babies and beat feet to outside to the nearest, have a plan. Is Wendy frozen? Yep, she froze. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what you have to do when you grab the nest. You, you oh, stand out no. like that for a while. Yeah. Can you hear me? Froze. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you grab the nest and then you, you run out the open doors. You make a plan with the nearest tree you put the nest in the tree at the same time, whoever closes that off. If the, if the bird is, if the adult bird is in the inside of the, the, you know, the walls, it will follow you out. So you might want to put something on your head, you know, wow. in case it starts pecking because you got all the babies in the nest. So One of those helmets. Yeah. <laughs> I have bird it. Yeah. Helmet. <laughs> it doubles as a bird helmet. <laughs> yeah. So then, yeah. and all right. So uh what I say is it's Todd with NC. Where did I say that? Come on. NC Wildlife. No, Team NC Wildlife Control was the one who guided us through that process he was really busy that for the you know for like a week so we couldn't um come out but they got the 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 nest was taken care of and the birds are safe so wow. it seems like it takes a long time to build a nest and then to have babies so i guess they don't use that cabinet much yeah yeah maybe <laughs> if they, the babies just hatched and they started hearing the crying yeah, and yeah. you know what i mean so gotcha it could happen to me with an upper cabinet that i can't reach 
Thank, yeah, God, that's thank God for Mac, right? <laughs> Not going to happen underneath the counters. <laughs> okay, we have, uh, we have some comments here. Okay. Uh, Doris, I had a snake coming out of my hood of my truck yesterday morning, ooh. and he went back and could find him and could find him. Hope he fell out. I hope he did too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're going to resolve this George's squirrel issue. Yes. And uh, yeah. So and Pat, you'll have yeah. to, you'll have to supervise us. <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, do the first four feet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> She's gonna be at the ready with the, the catcher gloves on. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Wow, what a great, show. what a fun show, you know? Always. Um, Always. Yeah. All right. So, is that a is that a wrap? Yeah. That's a wrap, folks. <laughs> That's a wrap, folks. All right. Send us your announcements, stories, and our events, and uh, we'll put them on our community calendar on New Bernal's website. Let us know if you'd like to be a guest or if you have any questions or suggestions by calling us at 252-259-6853 or send us an email at info at newburnnow.com. Thank you everyone for watching and listening and we hope you have a great day. And Thank you. One, what do we need? We need What you got there, Wendy? I've got. Oh, the music. <laughs>